Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to another of the Distress Oxide colour combination videos. Today we're looking at gathered twigs. Now, we haven't done many browns, we've uh, done a couple, um, but what I love about a brown, because it's a neutral colour, it will go into pretty much any colour you like. So today we're looking at cool, so we're going into a blue and a purple, doing some nice colour combinations with those two colours. Um, but we're also going to compare this colour to other browns in the range. Range. and then we're also going to just look at this in detail look at the undertones and see what it will work with now if you like anything that I'm using in the video it's all linked down below and if you like this video I'd really appreciate it if you could check back the playlist and have a look at all the other videos we've done so far for the other colors and also give me a subscribe that would uh, absolutely make my day so gather twigs let's get straight on with this now I'm going to just first of all blend gathered twigs into a white piece of cardstock now i always use white cardstock i have a lot of questions about the cardstock that i use and that's uh, a creative craft products cardstock it's the white stamping card so it is smooth it's about i think it's 280 or 290 gsm so it's a good weight but this is what gathered twigs looks like blended into that so it's a nice warm brown it's one of my go-to's I use this a lot for if I want to get a vintage look if I want to get an aged look around the edge of some mats and layers for example um, and I really really love mixing this in the way I'm going to my first combination it's absolutely my favorite combination to do so gathered twigs um, we've got that here as you can see there so that's our gathered twigs now it's interesting to see the slight difference that you get when you're blending onto different papers and cardstocks although they are white some seem to absorb the ink uh, better than others or less than others and you do get ever such slight different sort of variations in tones um, just by using a different type of cardstock so it's well worth um, just checking that out before you start a project, what colour tones you will get. Now this is still slightly damp as well, but you can see more from the blended out areas at the ends, you've got quite a yellow orange tone under here. Um, so this is gathered twigs. Vintage photo is very similar in my opinion. I think vintage photo it has a little more of a red base than an orange base, but not too dissimilar. And the same for brushed corduroy, really just a very slightly lighter shade of gathered twigs there. Um, if we come down to frayed burlap, again, not too dissimilar either. Um, there's nothing within these ones that compare. So if you're looking at browns and you're just starting out, I would say between um, probably brushed corduroy, vintage photo, gathered twigs and frayed burlap, I think you could pick any one of those up and use one of those for now until you start to build up the entire collection. Rather, I don't think there's any need for you to rush out and get all four, the difference is minimal. So there's your comparison with some other browns in the range. Sometimes I tell you there really is no other colour that's similar in the range and it really is a standalone colour and sometimes I'll tell you actually there's some that are similar so you know save a few pennies for now and um, just get one of these colours to get you started. Okay so let's do our first colour combination so this is gathered twigs we're going to go into this into one end with pumice stone okay just because I wanted to keep this mostly neutral with a pop of colour at the end so let's bring pumice stone into this end now this is a lovely light grey and we will eventually come to the video for this and as I'm blending it into gathered twigs it's just picking up that colour now because this is dry and I'm going on with the wet ink it's a little harder to blend so I'm going to put some gathered twigs wet gathered twigs over the solid area there and just bring a little bit up into the pumice stone and do a bit more blending and I'm going to do it that way because if one of your inks are able to dry it does make the blending a little bit harder so bring a bit more gathered twigs up because it is the the hero color for this combination and then again in with the pumice stone there we go so we're starting to get a really nice 
blend between the two there. Isn't that lovely? So it's almost fading it into a white, but not quite. You've still got that gray. I've actually brought the brown up a little more on this side. If you were doing a larger piece, you probably wouldn't notice that at all. But I could even that out, but let's go into the next color. And that's going to be Uncharted Mariner, a beautiful blue. Between this and Ice Spruce, it's one of my favorites. So again, my gathered twigs is a little dry on there, so I might need to give it a helping hand blending just by applying some more of the wet ink. So as you can see, a lovely, deep, rich color, Uncharted Mariner, bringing that right up to the brown. I've not started blending into the brown yet. I've just got a nice solid block there. Then I'm going to pick up some gathered twigs and I'm going to, first of all, with this go into the solid area here, not touching the blue because I want to reinstate that. And now I'm going to start in tiny little circles, just working up into that blue. So just keep working around in circles. You're moving the ink around on the paper, blending it until you get to a point where you're really into the blue and then pick up the blue brush with nothing else on, just what was already on it and do the same, but the other way until you're happy with that blend. Now you can see here that wet line where I applied the new, the fresh new ink, the shine on it. So uh, that's obviously going to be a little bit distracting at the moment. Once this is all dried, you will easily be able to see the, um, the beautiful, smooth and kind of creamy, almost, I suppose it is creamy um, color combination there. But I just think that's absolutely lovely. Like I say, we'll come back to that towards the end when that's a bit more dry. We'll be able to see that uh, a little easier and see the beautiful blend. But I really, really love that color combination. So that's pumice stone, gathered twigs and uncharted mariner there. So let's have a quick clean up. Like I say, put that to the side and we will look at that again at the end. And let's come on to a new piece of paper for another combination using gather twigs. And we're going to go with purple because as I say, a neutral really can go into any color. So what I've done here is I've got my gathered twigs on the end as my deepest, darkest color. I'm going into frayed burlap, the video of which has just recently in the last day or so gone up. So uh, because it's an F and it was just before gather twigs, but it's a, it's what I call a gray brown. So it's going to work really nicely to bring you then into milled lavender because you're getting into a cooler brown here. Going into milled lavender, which is a very pale lilac and it's kind of got that gray feel to it. And then going from that very pale lilac into a darky, dusty concord. Okay, dark, did I say darky? I'm not sure, but dusty concord, darker purple. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not editing things like that out. I don't see the need. <laughs> so let's start with gathered twigs on the end and just picking up this bit here. So I don't want to do too much. I want to, we've got Gather Twigs as the hero colour within this combination. We're just going to have a little bit of it here, just to show you how you can work them into other combinations. Now let's go with frayed burlap. So you'll see how this isn't too dissimilar, but it is more on the cool side. Just blending that round, bringing the gathered twigs down into it a little more. So Hopefully you can see there, now I talked about these not being too dissimilar, but hopefully you can see there the slight shade variation. You've got frayed burlap being a little bit lighter and I feel slightly more of a cooler brown and then going into gather twigs, which is warmer and darker. So just having that slight color variation is enough to lead us into the next color. So again, I always wipe my mat and I dry my mat. I don't want any of the water from wiping it to react with my ink blending. Now, milled lavender, we're taking quite a leap here from the browns into the purples. Firstly, because purples are usually considered, um, oh, I need my different blending brush. Now, what's happened with this one? For some reason, something's got on there and it's sort of dried. And although it's moving and it still feels soft and fluffy, it doesn't pick up the ink anymore. So I'm going to be changing for a new brush and you just see the difference. So you can see there, nothing really applied. Uh, a new brush 
and it's much much better now this is it's probably hard for you to see i've got this ever so bright this is a much uh, paler color so i'm going to need to build this up it has a bit of a pink tone to it as well which i think is why it helps go from a brown now as i was saying browns i consider warms usually and uh, purples i consider cool colors so to mix the two is a little bit sort of out there it's a bit outside the box um, but if you just get the right tones and I'm going to do a little bit of light blending with both the brushes between these two colors I think it will just work nicely there we go so again if I hold that up I think we need to do a bit more here we've got it laid a bit thick there then let's go in lastly. I'm not worried about cleaning my mat here because it's such a pale purple. It's not going to interfere with Dusty Concord, which is going on the end. Now, milled lavender, Dusty Concord work beautifully together. We don't need too much of the milled lavender. I'm just going to use a little bit that's already on my brush to blend those two into each other. So we've gone from a warm into a cool. Now I need to do a bit more work Let's wipe this mat again. I need to do a little bit more work into the frayed burlap and you'll find this sometimes with some blends you'll just find you need to work a little bit harder to get everything looking nice and smooth. There we go. Yeah perfect love that. Okay so as I say the two browns are very similar but by adding the gathered twigs then fading into the frayed burlap, into the milled lavender, and then going darker again into the purple, the dusty concord. It's just a really nice combination. Now, I've done it this way to show you, really focus on the browns for you, but you could certainly do much more of the purple and just have a little brown at the top. But I want to show you how you can work these colors into each other quite easily. So, so as dusty concord, milled lavender, frayed burlap, and gathered twigs and just a reminder and this one's still drying a little bit you can still see that wet patch across the middle but hopefully you can see the color combination that we've got there it's absolutely beautiful so that was a gathered twigs i hope you've enjoyed this look at this color uh, on its own and focusing on this one don't forget to check the playlist for everything else alphabetically that comes before gathered twigs and i will be working very soon on all of the other videos that come after as well i'll soon be shouting about it once i've got every color um, uploaded for you so uh, if you like anything that i've used in the video including the brushes the ink pads and the blending mats you can find everything linked down below so uh, go and check out that description for all the details thank you everybody a thumbs up and a, a lot or a thumbs up and a subscribe would be fantastic and i'll see you again very soon take care